Hi guys, so I'm going to read um, Superman number one. Um, a lot of this comic is reprints, so I, I never downloaded the complete scans of them. Because a lot, but I did get all the original stories and some of the reprinted issues. But it's this pretty iconic cover, Superman. The complete story of the daring exploits of the one and only Superman. 20, 64 pages of action, all in full color. And there's some ads for pistols and that. Uh, some artwork. And this is new. So Superman by Jerome Siegel and Joe Schuster. Just before the doomed planet Krypton exploded into fragments, a scientist placed his infant son within an experimental rocket ship, launching it towards Earth. When the vessel reached our planet, the child was found by an elderly couple, the Kents. Look, Mary, it's a child. The poor thing, it's been abandoned. Yeah, so, um, yeah, originally Martha Kent's name was Mary Kent. But the infant was turned over to an orphan asylum where it astounded the attendants with its feats of super strength. Of strength. We, we couldn't get that sweet child out of our mind. We've come to adopt him if you'll permit us. I believe that can be arranged. Woo, thank goodness they're taking him away before he wrecks the asylum. The love and guidance of his kindly foster parents was to become an important factor in the shaping of the boy's future. Now listen to me, Clark. This great strength of yours, you've got to hide it from people or they'll be scared of you. But when the proper time comes, you must use it to assist humanity. As the lad grew older, he learned to his delight that he could hurdle skyscrapers leap an eighth of a mile, raise tremendous weights, and run faster than a streamlined train, and nothing less than a bursting shell could penetrate his skin. What the? This is the sixth hypodermic needle I've broken on your skin. Try again, Doc. The passing away of his foster parents greatly grieved Clark Kent, but it strengthened a determination that had been growing in his mind. Clark decided he must turn his titanic strength into channels that would benefit mankind. And so was created Superman, champion of the oppressed, the physical marvel who had sworn to devote his existence to helping those in need. Outer rated waiting room of the Daily Star. You may see the editor now, but if you ask me, you're wasting your time. There's nothing like trying. I know I haven't any experience, sir, but I think, I still think I'd make a good reporter. Sorry, fellow, can't use you. In an alley, Clark removed his street clothes, revealing himself clad in the Superman costume. If I get news dispatches promptly, I'll be in a better position to help people. I've got to get that job. Superman launches himself up along the side of the building in a great leap. Within the edit editor's office. What's that? A mob accounting the, tacky the county jail? Cover that story. Hmm... Sounds like my big chance to impress the editor. He was hoping I'd get there in time. That moment, uh, before the county jail. Get him! Lynch! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what they did, but I, I don't know. Lynch the dirty dog. Yeah, it's pretty messed up, though. I know a lot of people associate that with black people. But, yeah, they did. There were white people They got... Like, if they did something bad, or they're accused of doing something bad. I'm pretty sure, anyway. In the States, anyway. I don't know. I'm not too familiar with it. I know I know what happened in the States. A few moments later, let me go. I ain't guilty, I tell you. That's right, Sims. Beg for mercy. But it won't do you any good. Don't do this to me. Please, please. Hanging's too good for you. Just this lynching is begin, about to begin. Down hurdles a fantastic figure. Go on, scatter. What in? This prisoner's face will, decided, will be decided in a court of justice. Return to your homes. So this is Superman's first public appearance. Um, in the in the Earth Two in the Golden Age continuity. Rush him! You're begging for it. The crowd is astounded to find itself swept back by the lone figure. I don't know how you did it, but you've my thanks. Who are you? A reporter. Let's get the prisoner back to his cell, in his cell. You saved my life, 
and I, I'm not forgotten it. I'll tell you in, I'll let you in on a red hot story. Let's have it. I'm being held for the murder of Jack Kennedy, but I didn't do it, and neither did Evelyn Curry, the girl who's being electrocuted tonight for it. Who is the murderer? B. Carroll, singer at the Hello nightclub. She rubbed him out for two-timing her and framed Evelyn. Thanks for the information. See, he's the same name as John F. Kennedy. And there's another story that's kind of creepy, actually. There's an Hour Man story where I think one of the characters is named, like his literal name is John F. Kennedy. It's pretty we're weird, but anyway. Yeah, so in this one, there's Jack Kennedy. So anyway, that's all I know about the attempted lynching. Well, do I get the job now? You're okay, Kent. Report to work tomorrow. Clark drops in on the Hillow Club. She'll be on any second. As B sings her number, she does not realize she's being closely observed by the greatest exponent of justice the world has ever known. Later, when she enters her dressing room, Say, what are you doing in my room? Waiting for you, naturally. I thought you might be interested in learning. I know that you killed Jack Kennedy. What kind of a nut are you, anyway? Get out of here before I call the manager. Sims told me everything, how you shot Jack. Then framed Evelyn. You attract me. Could we talk this over? You're wasting my t your time. I'm only interested in seeing that, s that you get what's coming to you. You'll regret butting into this. Yes, I killed Jack Kennedy and he deserved it. But you'll never tell anyone. You're not going to leave this room alive. Out darts Superman's hand at terrific speed. Crushes the automatic barrel out of shape. You little vixen. Are you ready to sign a confession, or shall I give you a taste of how that gun felt when I applied the pressure? You, you're hurting me. I'll get the chair for this. You should have thought about that before you took a human life. The governor will be interested in hearing what you've got to say. Special news bulletin. In half an hour, Evelyn Curry is to be electrocuted unless the governor repeat, reprieves her. We haven't much time. Okay, so this is all a reprint from Action Comics number one. I've already done that. So yeah, Superman breaks into the governor's mansion. And he fights that guy. And then she gets pardoned. And then, yeah, yeah I didn't download the... So, uh, an opportunity of a lifetime. Superman in Action Comics invites you to be a charter member of the Superman of America. Okay. I don't know if I'll read this out loud. You got you guys can read it if you like. Yeah, I think that was just a thing just to join a group, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so scientific explanation of Superman's amazing strength. Superman came to Earth from the planet Krypton whose inhabitants had evolved after millions of years to physical perfection. So this would not last, this would get go in like the 50s and 60s because it was retconned that Superman had his powers because he was under a yellow sun. Because um, there was a continuity error, like how would someone as powerful as Superman, how would a race as powerful as Superman not survive the planet exploding? That's how they did it. Like they weren't as powerful, they were under a red sun. But the, in these original comics, it says that the everyone on Krypton had Superman's powers. Basically, that's what they're that's what they imply. But the smaller size of our planet, with its slightier gravitational pull, assists Superman's tremendous muscles in the performance of miraculous feats of strength. Well, yeah, I guess the Grat will they're jumping around in that, so I don't know. But. Even upon our world today exist such creatures possessing super strength. The lowly ant can support hundred weights of hundreds times of its own. The grasshopper leaps what to man would be the space of several city blocks. It is not too far-fetched to predict that someday our very own planet may be peopled entirely by supermen. Well, yeah, that hasn't happened yet. 
boys and girls meet the creators of the one and only Superman America's Greatest Adventure Strip. So here is Jerry Jerry Siegel as type writer, thinking about uh, the, his next thrilling adventure of Superman, which will be shown in the July issue of Action Comics. Jerry is 24 years of age, a native of Cleveland, Ohio. I've said that before. Jerry has written so many books and stories which have, created, which have appeared in a great many magazines. I think he co-created The Spectre. And he made a bunch of other... I think he made Legion of Superheroes as well. Um, because he likes Superman best of all. Because he really believes in the principle which prompts Superman's startling accomplishments in behalf of law and justice. This is Joe Schuster, Jerry's lifelong friend and associate. From whose versatile pen and brush are depicted in Superman's amazing feats. Here he is at the drawing board about to start the new Superman episode. Which will be seen in July Action Comics. Joe too is a native and resident of Cleveland and has contributed to many publications. Joe says, I hope the boys and girls of America enjoy reading Superman. As much as Jerry and I enjoy writing and drawing it. Jerry Schiegel. And Joe Schuster are also the creators of Slam Bradley and Spy. Or I didn't know that. Slam Bradley. He was in the Catwoman comics later on. Which appeared in Detective Comics. Radio Squad. I don't know that is. More Phone Comics. And Federal Men. Which appears in Adventure Comics. Okay. Well, this is kind of cool. So here's a text story. This is... A DC database doesn't actually even list this story, but it, it is in the comic. It's a text story. Smash desks, overturned filing cabinets, strewn plaster, gaping holes in the wall, shining steel fixtures drooping in. Sad character caricature f of their former modernistic splendor greeted the startled detective sergeant's eyes as he swung open the office door to the firm. Harvey Brown, patent attorney. A quivering wreck of a man arose from the floor, stridently shrieked, He can't do this to me! Get him! Arrest him! Sergeant Blake surveyed the fellow's torn clothing, mossed hair and blackened eyes, then once again speechlessly regarded the carnage in the room. What in blazes has happened here? he roared, finding his voice at last. A cyclone? Cyclone nothing! exclaimed the trembling man. Worse! I've just had a visit from Superman! Superman? The, worst, the word burst from Blake's lips with the force of an explosion. Yes, he claimed after I've stolen my client's inventions. After he wrecked the place, he warned me that if I didn't go out of business, he'd come back and finish the job. I demand. Brown halted his tirade. The detective sergeant was no longer in the room. The remaining, remaining members of the riot squad were taken aback to see their superior officer come hurtling out of the hall at full tilt. Quick, shouted Blake. Seen anyone since I charged into the room? No one, volunteered a puzzled officer. That is, no one except a guy wearing a strange costume who asked what the trouble was, then stepped into the elevator. A howl of baffled rage left the sergeant as he sprang to the wall and desperately jabbed the elevator button. Fools! That was Superman! he roared. Concerted cries left the policeman. Superman? And he's in that elevator. What do we do? Blake seized the hand of one of his men and shoved it against the button. Keep that breast down for a full three minutes, Mooney, or I'll have your badge. You others, come with me. Toward the nearby stairway dashed Blake, followed by his men. As they clattered down at top speed, he explained. Fortunately, the elevator is automatically operated by the push buttons. On the various floors, as long as Mooney presses the button, Superman is trapped. And when the three minutes are up, and the Man of Steel gets off of the bottom floor, we'll be ready for him. Two minutes later, found Super the policeman ranged before the first floor entrance to the elevator, guns out. All eyes strained on the indicator, which showed that the car was stalled somewhere between the second and the first floor. Triumph blazed in Sergeant Blake's eyes. Visions of a pat on the back from the commissioner, a promotion in rank and a boost in salary, dangled tank tantalizingly in his mind. Careful, men, he warned. The officers grouped about him. We pray for this break for months. 
And now that it's come, we don't want to muff it. He was seen going into that elevator, and he's bound to come out of that door any moment. And that's what bothers me, muttered someone. What do we do when he does emerge? Said another. Our guns are useless against him. Nonsense, retorted Sergeant Blake. All we got to do is keep cool and we got him. But this glib comeback did not seem satisfied even the detective sergeant himself. There were some very wild tales being circulated about this fellow, who called himself Superman, who was said to be a modern Robin Hood, a person who had dedicated his existence to assisting the weak and oppressed. It was whispered that he possessed super strength, could lift tremendous weights, smash steel with his bare hands, jump over buildings, and that nothing could penetrate his amazingly super tough skin. But of course, ponder the sergeant. These were mere rumors, fantasy, fantastic fa fairy tales. Probably Superman was just an ordinary person whose better than average strength had been immensely exaggerated, without a doubt. Nevertheless, the hard-boiled cop couldn't prevent an apprehensive shiver from keep creeping up his spine. Suddenly, the arrow on the indicator began to move. The three minutes were up. Mooney had released the button, and the elevator was descending. With a clash of metal, the door to the elevator swung open, fingers tense on grunt gun triggers. Then, a hesitant alarm voice broke the electric silence. My word, put down those guns! Out of the elevator stepped a slim, nervous figure. Meek eyes blinked fearfully behind, thick-rimmed glasses. No Superman, this. Rather, a very much frightened young man. From somewhere behind him, the dumbfounded detective sergeant heard a smothered titter. His face reddened. Where's Superman? He shouted at the mouse-like young man who stood before him. What in all that is holy are you doing in that elevator? I was just uh, descending to the lobby when something apparently went wrong with the me me mechanism. I'll admit that I was terrified for a few moments, but... Answer me, thundered Blake. Did you see a man in a strange uniform in that elevator? No one at all. That is, except myself. I'm afraid there must be some mistake, Sergeant. I'm Clark Kent, reporter on the Daily Star. But Superman was seen to enter the elevator by one of my men. How do you explain that? Clark shrugged. It's beyond me, he said. Possibly your man was high-strung or had an overactive imagination. A loud laugh went up at this. The detective sergeant whirled to face his men, his features registering a disappointment. I guess it was just a false alarm at that. Let's head back for headquarters to turn in a report. I say, that's odd, interrupted Kent. I was just about to go to the police headquarters myself in search of a story. Do you mind if I accompany you? Later, as they sped through the streets with the squad car, Clark learned that people adjoining Brown's office had telephoned for a police car, complaining of a terrific rumpus going on in the patent attorney's office, and how Blake had expected Superman to emerge from the elevator. Very amusing, chuckled Clark. It'll make a good future article for the Daily Star. Hold on, bellowed Bacon protests. You can't print that. It would make me look like a sap. Don't print it. And maybe someday I'll return the favor. The reporter shrugged. Well, if you don't f feel that strongly about it, I'll forget the yarn. Temporarily. The conversation was cut short as they parked before a police station. As they emerged from the car, a ro an officer rushed up and exclaimed to Blake, Have you heard? Biff Dugan is just being captured. A happy grin quickly chased the glum expression from the dark detective sergeant's face. Biff was the long-sought murderer who had been eluding the law for months. I knew we'd catch up with that rat, Blake chuckled. Swift strides hurried Blake and Kent to the station. A few moments later, the prisoner, an ugly, hulking brute who sullenly refused to talk, stood before them. Thought you could have faded the law, did you? demanded the sergeant. Well, maybe you know better now. Clark tugged at Blake's sleeve. Remember, Sergeant, you offered to do me a favor. I'd like to take you up now. Suspiciously, Blake inquired. What? Allow me to interview the prisoner in private. And what? asked Blake. Is it wrong to interviewing him right here in front of me? 
You can see that he's no, in no mood to talk. Perhaps if I could speak to him alone. Are you loony? It's against regulations. It's... Clark smiled tauntingly, or tauntingly. If I can't have this interview, I'll have to write up a certain other story. One about a dumb detective sergeant who had his men surrounded an elevator in the hope. Wait, Clyde Blake. You can have that interview, he said ominously. But if anything happens to the prisoner, you'll be held personally responsible. Shortly later, within an adjoining room, Clark was occupied with the task of prying replies from a grump glum prisoner. When there came a knocking at the room's door, Bart turned from the prisoner, opened the door slightly. It was Blake, he demanded. Is the prisoner still there? Naturally, replied Clark, exasperated. See, for years, abruptly, Kent's words were choked off in a gasp of astonishment. Alarmed, the sergeant burst into the room. In one glance, he saw the reporter's hand pointing towards an open window. And no sign of Dugan anywhere. I don't know. Superman wouldn't let that guy escape. I think that's stupid. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this guy. That's just. It sounds like he's just a regular guy. So I don't, I don't know how he'd overpower Superman. But he's escaped! Exclaimed Clark. Sergeant Blake roared with rage, seized a frail reporter, and shook him angrily. "You!" he choked. "It's your fault." That makes you an accessory to the fact. The detective sergeant will never completely remember what happened just then. One moment he was shaking a fear-struck reporter, and the next instant he was whirling up into the air, as though caught up in the wind of, a, in the grip of a hurricane. Next instant he struck the wall, uttered a groan, and lapsed into unconsciousness. Clark Kent looked at the sergeant's recumbent figure, muttered, "Sorry, but I haven't time to use." kid gloves, then with amazing rapidity he stripped off his glasses and outer garments, revealing himself clad in a weird close-fitting costume and flaring cape. In this apparel, it was apparent that he really possessed a fine physique of breathtaking symmetry. One live leap brought him to the windowsill. There he poised momentarily while his keen telescopic vision. So I think this might be the first appearance of the X-ray vision. Uh, survey the vicinity, and then as he sighted the figure of Biff scrambling into a parked auto, he dived out into space. Out, out sped the fantastic figure, its mighty muscles launching it across an incredible distance. The auto was a full 300 yards away, but Superman smashed down into the gravel before it, just as the car's gears clashed and it leaped ahead. Within the car, Dugan snarled. The solitary figure which had hurtled down from nowhere, it alone stood between him and escape. He pressed the accelerator down to the limit with the intention of smashing it into the body, crushing it beneath the auto's wheels. He struck the figure with a crash, but then the impossible happened. Instead of being flung um, beneath the wheels, Superman held his ground, actually kept the roaring machine from moving. Astounded by this miracle, Biff threw the clutch into reverse, but again he was treated to an ex expedition. Ex 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 yeah, I always have trouble with that word. Yeah, it is exhibition of super strength. Having seized the foot the front bumper, the splint of steel prevents the automobile from backing up. A shriek of sheer horror tore from Dugan's throat. Frenziedly, he flung open the door of the automotive. Uh, automobile, sprang out and looked up to find himself faced by the Superman's grim figure. Half mad with fright, he leapt at the man of tomorrow, seeking to fight his way past, but it was like buckling against a stone wall. His fists encountered flesh as hard as metal, fracturing his knuckles. Suddenly, Biff was possessed with but one desire, to flee, to get away from this indestructible demon of wrath. He whirled, raced off with all his might, screeching at the top of his lungs. Next instant, arms of steel encircled him from behind. There was a pressure at the back of his neck, then unconsciousness. Sergeant Blake revived to find Clark Kent kneeling beside him. He felt his forehead groggedly, and then suddenly remembered what had occurred. Seized the reporter. You are under arrest, he shouted. What for? inquired Kent. For aiding Biff Dugan to escape, that's why, and... 
Clark pointed to a figure huddled on the floor nearby. Before you say any more, look over there. Blake looked, blinked incomprehendingly, then exclaimed, Dugan, but how? All I know, replied Clark, is that a man wearing a strange costume jumped to the windowsill, tossed Biff in, and leapt away. The detective sergeant sprang erect. Do you realize what that must have meant? Who that must have been? Superman. Clark's eyes widened. Gosh, I think you're right. You know, grudgingly admitted Sergeant Blake. Sometimes I think Superman isn't such a bad guy at that. But he hastily amended. Don't think that doesn't mean I won't arrest him the minute I get my hands on him. Let's hope you get within reaching distance, said Clark Kent. Detective Sergeant Blake cast a quick, suspicious glance at the reporter. For a moment, he'd fancied that he'd detected a trace of mockery in Kent's voice. But Clark's visage was completely solemn. The end. So yeah, that was a pretty long uh, text story. But follow the adventures of super, one and only Superman. Every issue of Action Comics. So yeah, we read... Well, I read the Tatara story, I think, in that issue. Is that number 17? No. I don't know. Or, okay. Well, yeah, that's the end of Superman number one. Um, yeah, it was just like one little comic story and a text story. Besides the reprints. But, um... Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, subscribe... That'd be appreciated, and I'll uh, see you guys later.